This is Byron Somm about to bring you the high spot of the 1950 football season. It's the big show in our touchdown series. The Colliers 61st All-America as selected by the American Football Coaches Association. To help present this great team, I've asked Harry Wismer, one of the nation's top reporters, to be with us. Well, thank you very much, Bye. It's a real privilege to be with you. Now let's get along with the official college All-America football team. We find our first All-American at one of the halfback positions, Vic Janowitz of Ohio State. This 20-year-old 5'9", 186-pounder hailed from Elyria, Ohio. Vic, shown here with Coach Wes Fessler, is a real 60-minute player. 1950 found Janowitz monopolizing sports headlines from coast to coast. Because of his amazing versatility, he runs, passes, punts, calls signals, kicks off, handles the extra points, and plays safety on defense to perfection. Let's watch him in action. It's the Iowa game. He takes a snap from center, sights his target, and literally takes to the air. Casillo gathers it in. Another touchdown for the Buckeyes. Now another specialty as he goes back for a punt return. Takes it on his own 40, and he's off on a Janowitz journey, threading his way 61 yards down a broken field with the power and speed of a runaway express. It's a familiar scene for Ohio State Rooters. Janowitz crossing the goal line. He gave a typical performance in this game. Besides running for two touchdowns, he passed for four more and kicked eight extra points. Incidentally, 11 of his 13 kickoffs for the Buckeyes sent the pigskin tumbling into the end zone. It's no wonder Janowitz has been described as a complete offensive platoon all by himself. Let's watch him add the extra point to this tally. As the teams line up, he goes back in position. He kicks, and his aim is as true as an arrow. Now we're in the Wisconsin game, and we're about to watch a demonstration of a typical All-America characteristic, the ability to fashion an offensive thrust on the split second. He's trying to pass, but the pack of Badgers won't let him get set. Okay, if he can't pass, he'll just switch into high. And when Janowitz gets going, it takes more than one man to bring him to earth. That's our spotlight on Vic Janowitz, a speedy juggernaut who will run over them when he can't run around them. See what I mean? At center, another Buckeye, Bob McCullough of Ohio State. McCullough's capable hands can snap the ball to a T quarterback or send it spiraling into a single wing. He's a master of each of the multiple Ohio State formations. Coach Wes Fessler himself, a former All-American, first noticed him in an All-Star high school game. Although at the time of his discovery, he only weighed 159 pounds, Fessler said, come to Ohio State, we'll fatten you up. They did a good job of it too, because now Bob has 190 pounds on that six feet, one inch body. The folks back in Urichville, Ohio, are mighty proud of his pigskin craftsmanship. This is McCullough's last year at the university but it's the year that he's come into his own. At the beginning of the season, he was considered as another good Buckeye linesman. But game after game, he performed so magnificently that Wes Fessler finally described him as the finest player in Ohio State's outstanding offensive line. That's rare enthusiasm for a conservative coach like Fessler. Here's what we mean. He snaps the ball, pulls out of the line, and throws a key block on the right-hand side of your screen. Now he pulls out to throw a brush block and then run interference. Let's freeze the action. There he is, number 52. Keeping a would-be tackler away from his ball handler. This is the kind of pass protection that made the Buckeye so effective by the overhead route. So Ohio State contributes two stars to the 1950 All-America, center Bob McCullough and halfback Vic Janowitz. They made a tremendous pair. Witness the Illinois game when Bob, 52 at center, pulls out. Blocks two men as Vic goes through and over for a touchdown. Janowitz and McCullough, two names of men that would add luster to any university. Bye for the moment. Let's leave our All-Americans.
Red Dapper of Tennessee holds down the guard position. Coming at you, 21 years old, 185 pounds, 5 foot 11. Here at Tennessee, Ted Dapper has earned a reputation as a good student and a fine fellow. He's respected by everyone on the campus, not only for his football prowess, but also for his genuine modesty. His teachers in the business administration course, as well as the students, are outspoken in their admiration for him. Last year, he was selected on eight all-opponent teams, a performance that's pretty hard to top. He was easily the best lineman in the Southeastern Conference and was recently awarded the Sportsman Trophy as the outstanding athlete in his home city of Norfolk, Virginia. Evidently, his pretty classmate is impressed with that record. He gives a good account of himself at the training table. During a campus bull session, he explains his plans for a career in transportation. Coach Bob Nalen considers Dapper the finest guard he's seen since the days of Bob Suffrage. Here's why. In practice, he shows how he goes about causing trouble to rival backfields. And in the actual game, he operates just as effectively. Watch number 67 explode into the scene. It's a tough job keeping him out of your way when you have the ball. Here's another dapper breakthrough in the Duke game. Harry, the stop action shows why they'll never describe Ted's side of the line as a soft spot. A perfect description by, all right fans, there's one of your All-America guards, Ted Daffer of Tennessee. Harry, now that we've seen a few of the All-Americans in action, suppose we take just a moment to find out how they're selected. Good idea, Pye, and we can't do better than have the sports editor of Collier's Magazine, Mr. Bill Fade, tell us all about it. Harry, each week during the football season, 250 members of the American Football Coaches Association report to Collier's after analyzing the work of the outstanding players in their game movies. On the basis of these reports, Collier's board selects the All-America team. Who makes up the All-American board, Bill? Well, we have an outstanding coach in each section of the country. There's Lynn Waldorf at California, Frank Leahy of Notre Dame, Henry Franca at Tulane, Tus McLaurie of Dartmouth and Lou Little at Columbia, Ray Elliott of Illinois, Dutch Meyer at Texas Christian, Carl Snavely of North Carolina, and Bud Wilkinson of Oklahoma. Well, Bill, that's certainly an All-American board making up our All-American selection. Let's go to West Point from one of our All-America ends, Dan Fulberg. Here he is, a great player, continuing a great family tradition. His brother Hank was also an All-America. As Cadet Regimental Group Officer, his place is at the head of the table. In addition, he's captain of the Army team. Goldberg weighs 185 pounds, is six foot one inch tall, and his letters go home to Dallas, Texas. Say, Harry, what does Coach Red Blake say about him? Red calls him the finest offensive end he's ever coached. He says that as a blocker, especially on the opposing tackle, Folberg has no equal. As a matter of fact, most experts figure that Dan's blocking make Al Pollard the East most feared running back. Well, bye, that's the way Dan Folberg, one of the finest pass receivers in the country, stacks up. Now, how about seeing him in game action? All right, Harry, it's the Pennsylvania battle. Dan, at the top of your screen, throws a perfect block as his teammate drives through. In the same game, wearing number 81, he drifts out into the clear, reaches up and pulls the ball down for a substantial gain. Here's a spectacular play. Holberg, at the top of your screen, takes out two players. That's the kind of blocking most coaches pray for, but seldom get. It's Bobby Blake, the coach's son, on the firing line. His target, ever-reliable Dan Folberg, of course. Army in punt formation. Blake sends the pigskin spiraling downfield and racing diagonally over from his position at right end. Folberg is under the kick to make the tackle. 
and when he spills them, they stay spilled. In the Stanford game, played in a rain that turned the field into a sea of mud, he caught the pass that won for Army, a true All-America. Dan Folberg does best when the going is the toughest. And while we're on the subject of the best, at tackle, it's Jim Witherall of Oklahoma. Jim's done quite a bit of growing in his 20 years. Height 6'4", weight 220. That's a lot of man coming at you. At fullback, another sooner, Leon Heath. Out Oklahoma way, they call this fellow the mule train. Why? Well, you'll see in a few moments that he's just about as hard to stop. Leon is 21 years old, weighs 195 pounds, and stands one inch over the six-foot mark. Oklahoma, along with Ohio State, contributed two members to our squad. Harry, you're a good friend of Coach Bud Wilkinson. What does he say about Heath and Weatherall? He says that Jim on the right there is a strange mixture. Off the field, he's the politest fellow you'd want to meet. But out on the gridiron, he's a raging blocker who just can't be stopped. And for Leon Heath, Bud feels he's the only fullback he's seen who does absolutely everything a great fullback must do. Jim is a junior in the Oklahoma School of Business. Right now, he's studying for his course in Naval ROTC. His quiet attitude conceals a sharp sense of humor. The wrestling coach at Oklahoma still remembers the time when Jim, after grunting and groaning away on the mat, put in a request that they install the two-platoon system. Now for Jim in action in the game with Texas. Wearing number 71 on the left side of your screen. Watch him slash by two blockers to help smear the ball carrier. Weatherall at the bottom of the screen. Again, 71 correctly diagnoses the play. He cruises behind the line to stop the drive through center. Texas sends a man back to pass, but they reckon without Weatherall. He's in so fast that the passer has to throw the ball away to avoid a long loss. Who's back to kick the extra point? Number 71, of course. It's good. Jim kicks the winning extra point of the Texas game to keep Oklahoma's long winning streak intact. Now for a closer glimpse of Leon Heath and his pretty wife. The eyes of the country were on Heath in the start of this season. He opened 1950 in brilliant fashion. In the Sugar Bowl victory over LSU, he was voted the greatest player on the field after driving 170 yards from scrimmage. That was more than the combined total of all the other backs in the game. Coach Wilkinson claims greatness for Leon because he's a top hand at blocking, backing up the line, bucking and pass receiving. Those driving legs carry him along at a whirlwind clip. In this game, a sudden spurt sends him around end for a substantial game. Oklahoma generally explodes from the split tee, and that means the fullback must be a master blocker. Judge for yourself how well he does his job. But most important, a fullback has to hit that line and make it bend. And that's where Heath got the nickname of Mule Train. Once he gets up a full head of steam, brother, that's it. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, here's a picture of the mule train in action. A last look at Leon Heath, our All-America fullback. And Jim Weatherall, an All-American tackle. Two great players from a great university. Our other end, Bill McCole of Stanford University. Bill here with Stanford coach Marty Swartz is a rugged 60-minute player who is six feet four and weighs 225. His home is San Diego. He's regarded as Stanford's best football player since Ernie Nevers. In that rain-drenched Army game, playing offensive left end, he throws a key block. Again at the bottom of your screen, he blocks, then slushes through the mud to latch onto a pass. But even though covered with mud, you can tell Bill McCall's an All-America. A 
Our other halfback, Kyle Rote of Southern Methodist. This six-footer is a Mustang's worthy successor to the great Doak Walker's place on our 11. And although he's a tornado on the gridiron, at home, a pretty little girl who answers to the name of Mrs. Kyle Rote has him well under control. He looks rather domesticated here, doesn't he? Sure does, By, and incidentally, the Rotes were expecting when these scenes were made. Well, judging from the apron, Kyle is all set and prepared for the event. Coach Rusty Russell wasn't surprised to see Kyle make our team. He says that he knew that Rote was an All-American the first day he saw him perform. At 195 pounds, Rote has the weight and drive required for slashes through the middle. But he's also fast enough to turn the ends. A split-second thinker, he runs or passes as the situation develops. This play is proof that Rote continues in the tradition of brilliant SMU running backs. This is what I call real swivel hip action. Hole number 44 again, he goes back to pass, then suddenly darts through an opening. Once clear in a broken field, he's twisting on a speed demon who is tough to bring down. He throws as well as he runs. Here he fades back, sights Johnny Champion and connects. In 1949, Kyle led the Southwest Conference in touchdowns, rushing and putting and turned in the best single performance of the year when he sparked the Mustangs to within inches of beating a great Notre Dame 11. He can catch them as well as throw them. A glue-fingered receiver, he figures prominently in many of the Mustang aerial attacks. He's most dangerous on those wide end sweeps because he's got the uncanny ability of accelerating sharply when he sees the opening. Often, the opposition expecting a pass is caught flat-footed. Yes, that's Kyle Rote, an outstanding addition to any All-America 11. We're proud to have him. Fans will be back in just a moment. At the other tackle, Holland Donan of Princeton. He's the tallest man on our team. At six feet, five inches, that king-size frame is covered with 228 pounds of muscle. His coach, Charlie Caldwell, prizes Holland for his fighting spirit as much as his playing ability. Donan is rated by Eastern coaches as Princeton's greatest lineman since the days of Stan Keck, almost 30 years ago. In the past three years, the opposition has run five out of every seven plays away from his position. During this season, he worked out a 25,000-word history of the glass industry. That's the dean of the college with him, Francis Godolphin. All right, bye. Now let's watch Donan at work. Princeton kicks off. As the ball sails through the air, Donan speaks downfield and nails a receiver almost in his tracks. Here he is again, the second Tiger from your left. The ball is passed and he moves in to effectively snuff out any idea of a successful aerial attack. Navy tries to run through his side of the line and learns it would have been simpler to dynamite. Here Princeton's opponents launch an aerial. They complete the pass, but Donan's tackle takes most of the profit out of the play. Navy kicks. But Donan is just as much in evidence as ever. He takes the ball, puts his head down, and plows up the field. And that's the story of Holland Donan, All-America tackle from Princeton. At our other guard, Bud McFadden of Texas. Run your eyes over the big broth of a man, six feet, four inches, 240 pounds, and one of the roughest, toughest players to come out of the Southwest in many a moon. It's Lewis Bud McFadden, who ended the Texas search for a block of stone to put in the line. 
In Bud's hometown of Iron, Texas, where muscle is more important than a bankroll, his strength is legendary. Coach Blair Cherry welcomed Bud to the university with the most appropriate gift imaginable, a two-pound sirloin steak dinner. You know Bud is one of the most colorful college performers to come along in years. And of course, that endears him to the heart of all Texans. You come from Texas by, isn't that right? Sure is, Harry, but he's got more than color. Look at him work. At left guard in white jersey, he pulls out of the line to block number 62. Texas with the ball, Bud playing offensive left guard, pulls out and makes a key block to open the way for the ball carrier. This time, from the same position, he pulls out to lead the interference. His explanation of how he plays defense is quite simple. He says, I just run in there and grab a lot of them. I peel them off, and the one that's got the ball, I keep him. Well, that certainly sounds logical enough. His big interest in life is his guitar, hunting, fishing, and listening to hillbilly music. Usually, dresses in blue jeans, boots, 10-gallon hat, a sports shirt, even on the campus. And that's Bud McFadden, capable of holding his own in any company, even in the rarefied atmosphere of the All-America. The 11th member of our team, Vito Pirelli of Kentucky at quarterback. A smiling 73-inch bolt of lightning, Vito calls Rochester, Pennsylvania his home. Although he's nicknamed the Babe, he turns in a man-sized job out there on the gridiron. His coach, Paul Bryant, calls him the best collegiate quarterback he's ever seen. Says he's the finest T-formation ball handler playing today, either in collegiate or professional ranks. Is that an overstatement? Well, suppose you're in the opposing backfield. Could you follow the ball? Try it again. He's plenty good, all right. Out of the ball skins, he's a diffident, retiring sort of fellow. This pretty companion is one of his classmates. He has no steady girl. Although he's never tardy at the training table, his weight stays around the 183 pound mark. Babe is a physical education major at the university, and his postgraduate plans include a coaching career. Really, is a triple threat performer in the truest sense. He excels as a passer, runs well, punts with a high average. One comment on his aerial ability deserves to be repeated. They said, he handles the leather with the baffling skill of a transatlantic card shark and can dot a receiver's eye at 50 yards. That just about covers it, Harry. For example, take this heave in the Villanova game. Seems like that all his receivers have to do is to be at the appointed place at the right time. In slow motion, watch his smooth ball handling. Babe functions equally well in the single wing, double wing, or T. Here from the single wing, he dodges around the backfield garden until his receivers break into the clear. And even off balance, he pitches one as accurate as an adding machine. As he races back, he makes the handoff so well that he continues to draw attention from the opposing team. In the North Dakota game, Babe pitched five touchdown passes to shatter Stan Heat's record of 22. The Wildcats, sparked by Pirelli, won the game 83 to nothing. So there's the story on the 1950 Colliers All-America quarterback, Vito Babe Pirelli. He and his 10 teammates make up a dream team if there ever was one. Let's run down the 1950 Colliers All-America, Harry. At one end, Bill McColl of Stanford. At the other end, Dan Folberg of Army. At one tackle, Holland Donan of Princeton. The other tackle, Jim Weatherall of Oklahoma. At one guard, Bud McFadden of Texas. The other guard, Ted Daffer of Tennessee. Our center, Bob McCullough of Ohio State. Quarterback, Vito Perilli of Kentucky. One of our halfbacks, Vic Janowitz of Ohio State. The other, Kyle Rote of SMU. And the fullback, Leon Heath of Oklahoma. In a world of continually shifting values, the American way of life remains constant. We need go no further than our game of football for proof. 
This week, in addition to the 1950 All-America, Collier selected its representative team for the last half century, meaning that 50 years ago, Americans were cheering just as enthusiastically for gridiron favorites. And since the essence of football is fair play and delight in a hard-fighting winner, we as a nation have not changed. When we cheer the All-Americas of today, we are recognizing that the twin drives of sportsmanship and competition retain their place in everyday American life.